So far in the previous lectures pertaining to the unit 2, we have covered about DNA replication. That is the three models of DNA replication. And then the accepted model there in the living organism is a semi-conservative model for which the measles and stall experiment is the one which is a conclusive proof for that. Regarding the measles and stall experiment, I have not providing any lecture from my side. However, you can able to see a lot of other lectures that have been made and available in the YouTube. So you can directly click here in the e-tutorials that is under unit 2. In the serial number 3, you can find various videos that explains about the measles and stall model. Even certain simple explanations were available and some explanation that have been available in the Tamil language also that will help you to understand the concept. Well. Next we have seen about the replication and what is a replicon structure, then what is a replication fork and what are the two different types of replication, mainly the bidirectional replication and rolling circle replication. In this lecture, we are going to see what are the enzymes and proteins that have been involved in the replication. It's only a single protein that is called as a single strand binding protein which is involved in the process of replication whereas various other kind of enzymes have been involved in the process which include nucleases, kinases, helicases, DNA primase that results in the formation of primosome, DNA polymerase and finally the ligase. Before going into detail and studying about these enzymes, we will first look at how the overall steps of the replications have been coordinated there in the cell. To understand about the overall steps of the replication, you come there into our web page that is under the tab web resources or quadrant 3 in that you click on the unit 2 in which under the serial number 3 you can able to see a complete explanation there about the DNA replication process. So this is a video which completely explains about the various steps that have been involved there in the DNA replication process. So you go through this video which will help you to understand the total process of replication in a much easy way. Before going into the enzymes and their functions in detail, we will look at here the list of enzymes. And what is the gene that has been encoding the particular enzyme and their function in a overall way. So this includes DNA gyrase, initiation factor, helicase, helicase loader. So these are all the names of the enzymes that have been encoded by genes, their respective genes. Say for example DNA gyrase is encoded by gyrase B. And in the last column I have provided the function of that particular enzyme. You just read the things by yourself and get acquainted with various enzymes and what kind of role they play there during the course of the replication. And this one is a diagram that shows how these enzymes have been arranged there during the course of the replication. So you can able to see the names of the enzymes are all there. What is their functions are all we will see later when we look at into the individual explanation related to a particular enzyme. So this is a DNA polymerase enzyme, this is a DNA helicase, this one is a DNA primase, then you can able to see a DNA gyrase enzyme, then you can able to see the single strand binding protein. I have told only except single strand binding protein, all others are specifically enzyme in nature. Whereas single strand binding protein is alone referred as a protein there during the process of the DNA replication. And you can able to see how the leading strand is arranged and how the lagging strand is arranged. So you first get acquainted with what are the enzymes and how they are going to play a role there in the replication process. Before going into the enzymes that are involved in the DNA replication, we will look at what are the order in which the enzymes are functioning there on the replication. First of all, which enzyme will be acting? And subsequently, what is the enzyme acting? And what is the final enzyme that have been involved there in this process? Now we look at the details of the individual enzymes that have been involved there in the process of replication. The first and foremost enzyme are nucleases. As the name implies, they will be acting on the nucleic acid. 
that is on the polynucleotide chain. They can able to hydrolyze or break the polynucleotide chain into individual nucleotides. Polynucleotide chain will be commonly held together with the help of a 5 dash or 3 dash phosphodiester bonds. This image will show you the phosphodiester bonds that forms as a backbone for a, any kind of a polynucleotide chain. So these are the places in which the phosphodiester bonds will be arranged. If you look at in this image, you can able to see how a phosphodiester bond has been present between the 5 dash and 3 dash end of a sugar. Thus, a polynucleotide chain is held together by a 5 dash to 3 dash phosphodiester bonds, which is also referred as a sugar phosphate backbone bonds. And this can be hydrolyzed, that is, it can be cleaved with the help of nuclease enzyme, which can attack either on the 3 dash end or a 5 dash end of this linkage. These nucleases are having a role there in the recombinational repair. How means? Lethal double strand breaks in the DNA are essentially need to be performed when that particular DNA is getting mutated or there is a change in the base sequence or affected through ionizing radiation or replication error or even of a oxidative damage. So that particular portion of the nucleotide need to be cut and removed and it need to be replaced. That's the things we will see in the subsequent lectures. And finally, there are certain specific nucleases that can be able to cut down on certain exact sequences. They are referred by the term restriction enzymes. Restriction enzymes are having a wider application there in the field of genetic engineering, mainly to manipulate the DNA molecule. That is to cut some specific sequence and add a particular gene inside and get it transformed. So, it has a wider application in the field of agriculture, food security and medical treatment are all. The nucleases enzyme can be further grouped into two types based on the position in which they are acting. They can be referred as a exonucleus or they can be referred as a endonucleus. So, these are the two different types of nucleases. The word itself implies the meaning. Exo means those that have been acting on the outside regions of a polynucleotide chain. Just look at this diagram that have been present there in the right side of this slide. This explains the activity of all these three different enzymes that is exonuclease, endonuclease and restriction endonuclease. Exonuclease as I already told it will be acting in the outside or at the end of a polynucleotide chain. So, this is the one which is acting at the end of a one strand of a double stranded DNA molecule. As a result, a small portion has been removed there from the enzyme. However, if you look at into the endonucleus, the enzyme is been acting inside the polynucleotide chain. So, it is acting inside and it is again removing a few portion of the nucleotides there from a single strand of a double standard DNA molecule. The third one is a restriction endonucleus. As we already seen, they are having a lot of application there in the genetic engineering. They are acting on certain specific regions of the DNA molecule. So that some specific cut has been created in those regions, certain beneficial genes can be tagged and they can be expressed there in the field of the genetic engineering. Thus, the exonucleus enzymes of nucleases type will be attacking mainly on the ends, ends of a DNA molecule and they, that's the reason they are referred as a exonucleus. Depending upon the specificity of these enzymes, they may act either on the 3 dash OH end or on the 5 dash phosphate ends of the DNA molecule. Under both the cases, the exonuclease enzyme travel along the nucleotide chain in a stepwise manner. That is, when they are acting on the nucleotides, they will be liberating a single nucleoside monophosphate molecule and eventually by this process, the entire DNA polymer will be digested on the due course. The next type of the nuclease enzyme which you are going to study in detail is endonuclease. It is the one which also acts on both the sides of a phosphodiester linkage of a DNA molecule, but they react only with those bonds that occur interior to that of the polynucleotide chain. If you look at into the exonucleus, they will be acting in the ends. 
However, if you look at into endonucleus, it will be acting interior of the polynucleotide chain and they will be removing a small portion of the nucleotides there. If the nucleotide chain is a single stranded, especially in a viral DNA molecule, such an attack would obviously resulted in the creation of nucleotide chain into two pieces. However, in the cases of double helix, which is commonly come across in the prokaryotic as well as the eukaryotic DNA, a single endonucleus mediated action could cut and cause a small nick in the strands and which in turn serve as a substrate for acting of the other nucleases in that particular region. As a result, nucleoside monophosphate will be released during the process. In eukaryotes, nucleases were thought to play an important role in removing the RNA primers which are formed by the primase enzyme. 